Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'll walk you through my painting process of this illustration of another creature from Slavic folklore called Vodjanoi. This time I'm not painting a complex background and I don't need a clean edge, but I've still taped the paper onto my desk to prevent it from warping and buckling. This is the final sketch that I've done digitally and then I printed it out and transferred it to this paper. The paper I'm using is Fabriano Mixed Media Paper, 250 GSM. I love this paper because it's suitable for all the watercolor techniques I like to use. It doesn't soak up the paint immediately, so I have some time to move it around. But what I love it the most is because it allows me to lift paint easily where needed, and I use this technique a lot. The way I begin painting depends on the complexity of the sketch. If I have a clean line drawing without any shading, like this one here, I just go over the lines with the base color, but if my drawing is more sketchy and has some shading, I'd usually seal the graphite by going over the sketch with some clean water. Over the last few months I've tried a few different uh, watercolor brands and I haven't settled on either one of them exclusively. Instead I chose my favorite colors from each brand and combined them into my own palettes. So here I have Windsor and Newton mostly and some Sennelier and White Knights. This first wash on his fins is a mixture of deep green, cerulean blue and a touch of indigo blue. For his tail I used the same colors but I added more deep green and indigo in the mixture and just a tiny bit of cerulean blue. Later in the video you'll see me glazing over the tail and fins with purple and afterwards with some burnt umber. The last time you see me painting Rusalka, beautiful maiden of the rivers, and this time I'm painting Vodjano and he is the male version of the same species. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out if you're interested. Although they are representatives of the same species, Vodjanois are obviously not as pretty as Rusalki. Another difference is that Vodjanois cannot leave the water at any time of the year, except when they take another form, because they are shapeshifters. I would like to mention that if you search the internet for Vodjano, you will most likely find descriptions of a creature that looks like an old man with long beard who can also be seen on the shore by the rivers. And yes, he is Vodjano or Vodnik, but he is the leader of all Vodjanois and is also referred to as Water Spirit or Water King. He rules the waters from his crystal palace at the bottom of the worlds and he has an army of 100 Vodjanois who are his soldiers, his servants. And he himself is one of those hundred, the first one, the main one, and this guy I'm painting here is one of his soldiers, so one of the other 99 and not the Water King himself. I'll leave him for another video. Here I began working on his tail with that mixture of deep green, indigo blue and cerulean blue. The brush strokes are streaky because I'm using the smaller brush so I can get into those small areas. After that first layer was done I switched to a bigger brush for a cleaner wash. I wanted some texture and subtle highlights in his tail, so I went in with clean damp brush to wet those areas and leave the paint with a piece of paper towel. If this was the final stage of the illustration, I wouldn't go that far with lifting the paint, but at this stage I kept in mind that I'll glaze over it with two more colors later on. Just like I did on his tail and fins, I went over the lines of his face and upper body with the base color of his skin. For the skin tone, I mixed in yellow ochre, carmine red and some purple to cool it off a bit. And after the first layer was done, I added some ultramarine blue in the mixture for the shadows. Vodjanois are the souls of men who have drowned in water by accident or have been recruited, so to speak, by either Vodjanois or Rusalki. They are described as fish-like or frog-like creatures with long fishtails, swept fingers and long green or red hair. 
They are armed with chains or whips or tridents and they swim by the bridges or watermills searching for their victims. If they spot an easy prey, they would entangle their legs with their tails or whips and drag the victim in the water to drown them. Poitonoids are protectors of all the living things under the water and that's why they don't like fishermen, their boats and fishnets. They would tear the fishnets and pierce the holes in their boats. Sometimes the fishermen could make a pact with Poitonoids. They would negotiate a good catch during their lifetime in exchange for their soul. When the time comes, they would voluntarily go into the river to drown and become one of the Poitonoids. You didn't have to be a fisherman to make a deal with Vojanoi. You could negotiate other things Vojanoi magic could provide, like to become wealthy or strong, popular with women even. But the price wouldn't vary much. It will always be your soul when the right time comes. Vojanois would sometimes take a different form, sometimes of an animal like a horse or a dog, but sometimes even a handsome man. When that's the case, they could seduce women and make love to them. From these relationships, even children could be born, but those children would be born ill or even with monster-like features. Now I'm going over his tail with a light wash of purple. This is one of those two glazing layers I mentioned earlier. I glaze the whole tail equally, knowing that this lighter tone will be soaked into those dark green tones and that the highlighted areas will emphasize that beautiful purple and make those pretty transitions. After I finished the webs between his fingers and painted his nails, I went over to his hair and I used the indigo blue for the lines and colored in the rest with the same mixture of green like on his tail. I didn't add purple glaze here because I wanted to separate it a bit from the tail. His fins are in this lighter tone, so they cut more purple than the rest of his tail. And even though I think these colors are beautiful, they're not suitable for this kind of illustration, at least in my opinion, because they're very bright and saturated, and uh, I didn't want him to look like a Disney princess. My taste definitely leans more towards those earthy tones, like in those old watercolor paints made of earth pigments. To achieve that look, it would be useful to use that uh, traditional white paper that's slightly toned, a bit yellow. But in that case, I wouldn't have this bright white background that makes everything stand out so well. So to get those earthy tones, I decided on this third glaze with burnt upper, which warmed everything up and desaturated those bright cartoony colors. Then I lifted the paint off of some parts of the fins because they blended in with the rest of the tail too much. I dabbed the paint off with a damp brush and paper towel so it separated it a bit. I glazed over his hair with the burnt umber to bring some warmth to that green color as well and to make everything connected. Now all that was left was his weapon, his trident, and I must be honest, I did not invest too much time in the design of the weapon, obviously, but I'm glad I added those shiny red crystals, they complemented nicely those gold greens and blues, and it would be too boring without them. Oh yes, and I forgot to say that if you ever find yourself near the water in the middle of the night, and you hear someone calling your name, don't answer it. Those are Vojanois or Rosalki, and if you respond to the calling in any way, even if it just who's there, you're done. They'll enchant you and you'll just go into the river, so it's better to stay silent. 
Anyway, back to the painting. I wet the paper with the clean water and decided to add this blue in the background as an abstract representation of water. The empty white space was just too big and too bright, so these little blue splashes in the back just connected everything together. I was just careful not to make it too strong, so it wouldn't be too distracting and it wouldn't ruin the silhouette of the creature. Here we are at the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, check out my other videos where I paint and present creatures from Slavic mythology and folklore. I'll leave the links in the description. And here's the final illustration. Thanks for hanging out with me and if you like to hang out more, like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay well and bye!